Okay, thanks for tuning in. Every once in a while I do a video that's a bit more serious on a serious topic, and this is one of those videos. Now, uh, I've done a video like this in the past about this particular topic, and the topic is the Ebola disease, which is flared up again in Africa. I've done a, a video on this in the past. I'm not going to link to it here because, quite frankly, I'm embarrassed by it. It was one of my earlier, earlier videos, and it's really bad. So if you really want to see what I did earlier, go ahead and dig through my videos, and you can find it earlier. But you know what? I'm just going to redo a lot of this stuff uh, this time around and pretend as if this is the first time I've ever done a video on Ebola. All right, so what is Ebola? Well, it, in its simplest terms, it's a virus. It's a virus that happens to be fairly rare and fairly deadly. I think in terms of fatality, Ebola can kill anywhere from 25% with certain strains all the way up to 90% with, with the more deadly strains of Ebola. There are multiple strains. In fact, little known fact, there's actually a strain of Ebola that showed up in Reston, and it's called Ebola Reston. Happened to be one that affected monkeys only. I don't think it transferred over to humans, or if it did transfer to humans, uh, then it only caused basically a, symptoms like a cold. But there's a book, and I'm going to I'm going to put a picture of it here. There's a book called Hot Zone, and uh, it actually tells the story. It's a true story about Ebola in Reston, Virginia, in the United States. Highly recommend that book. It will freak you out. Anyway, one of the scary things about Ebola is um, that, well, first of all, let me back up. The, Ebola is transmitted basically by contact, right? So when you look at the news or where you see news reports about Ebola and doctors and people going into huts in Africa uh, to, to visit people who have been affected by Ebola, you'll see them guess, dressed from head to toe in protective gear. That's because you don't want to get any blood, sputum, you don't want to get any body fluids on your skin because that amps up. If there's any break in your skin, any way for the virus to get in, you, you've got it, and then you you are the next victim, and there's a good chance you're going to die. So it's basically transmitted directly from fluids that have to come in contact with you. You don't want to be sneezed on, you don't want to be bled on, and quite frankly, I don't, I wouldn't want to kiss anybody with Ebola. And there's actually been some studies to suggest that you can get Ebola even after somebody has recovered from the virus through sexual contact. So I'm going to look for that. I'm saying that, and I'm not sure if I'm wrong. I'll go ahead and put a. a a box up here to say I'm wrong. If I'm right, I'll put a link to the research below. So when you when you come down with Ebola, basically you can get exposed to it and it can invade your bloodstream, but you won't know anything right away. It could take anywhere from two to 21 days before you start experiencing symptoms. What are the symptoms? First thing you're gonna feel is something like the flu. You won't even know at first that you have Ebola. You'll feel like you've just come down with a bad case of the flu. And that includes things like vomiting, diarrhea, temperature, headache, body ache, those sorts of things. Next, you may go into some form of confusion, basically, where you're having trouble thinking and and you could actually develop some sort of rash all over your body or in portions of your body. At that point, what's happening is that the virus is replicating and multiplying inside your cells. And what can happen then, and this is why sometimes it's called a hemorrhagic fever, uh, certain portions of your tissue can start to hemorrhage and bleed out. So you'll see in some cases, people will bleed from their eyes, blood will be running out of their nose. Um, you could have bloody diarrhea, those sorts of things. You can imagine that at this point, you're, you are pretty far gone. You are in bad shape. And if you're not getting cared for by a physician at this point or in a hospital, there's probably a good chance that you're not going to make it. Even if you do make it, even if you're lucky enough to get treatment to kind of keep you rehydrated, I think that's the primary way you die. Uh, even if you're even if you're lucky enough to, to get treatment and make it through, um, and let's say maybe maybe you you're infected with one of those strains that only kills one out of four people, and, and you make it through for the rest of your life, there's a good chance you're going to be affected by the damage that's been done to your organs. You may be you may have damage to your joints that's basically going to make your joints ache for the rest of your life. Uh, you're going to live with some of the symptoms basically until the day you die. Now, Ebola is, belongs to a family of viruses called phyloviruses. Now, this is not to be confused with phyllo dough, from which uh, tasty treats like uh, baklava are made, right? You can't get Ebola from eating baklava. Probably somewhere, if I looked at the derivation of that, that uh, word phyllo, there would be some sort of uh, link between the two. I'm not that smart, and I'm not that inclined. You go ahead and look it up yourself. So what happens between outbreaks, right? I mean, clearly this thing, every once in a while it flares up. Where, where does this virus live when it's not in humans, right? Well, people think that it lives in fruit bats, and the fruit bats sometimes transmit it to monkeys. In Africa, they often eat what's called bush meat, which is basically people in villages go out and kill monkeys and then put them over a fire and roast them. Well, it turns out that they may not have killed all of the, the Ebola, or during the cutting up process, they may get, get some of that fluid on their hands. Next thing you know, they're infected with Ebola. There are then buried practices in some remote parts of Africa that involve washing dead bodies and having close contact with dead bodies, especially if they're family members. And you can imagine if that body is still kind of oozing with, with uh, virulent kind of particles, those people, those family members are going to get it on their hands, it's going to get into their system, and then you've got an outbreak, a major outbreak.
Now, what's going on in Congo right now, I think, is so far being controlled. I think four people have died, and it's in the 20s. 20-something people have been exposed or infected with Ebola. And the countries on the borders have now already set up basically monitoring stations so that if they catch people trying to cross the border, they can at least take their temperature, see if there are any symptoms of Ebola going on before they let them into their country. Is that a guarantee to stop the spread of the virus? No. You need, ap you need instant you need instant response from people like the World Health Organizations, well, World Health Organization, people going in there to help treat, help contain, help quarantine, and help keep those cases isolated so it doesn't blow up into a major city. Once it gets into a major city, then you've got a problem. Then you've got airplane vectors, right? Planes going from Congo to other major African cities, to cities in Europe, and potential spread from there, you know, going forward. Now, one of the things we have going for us these days is that there may actually be a vaccine for Ebola, and they're going to test it out in this Congo case right now. I don't know if they've done it already or if they have any results, but basically they have a, an experimental vaccine. They don't know if it's going to work. I would imagine that they've gotten some indication that it does work well in laboratory settings. And so they're, they're not just going in there with some random vaccine to give people. No, they, they have to have some indication that it kind of works. They're going to go and use it in Congo, and fingers crossed, if this works, this could at least in the short term help us until the virus mutates and changes into another form. In the short term, it could maybe help us keep outbreaks from spreading rapidly in the near and distant future. Maybe just in the near future. Did I say short term? If I said short term, then just in the near future. If I didn't say short term, then maybe this vaccine could help us in the near and distant future. You know what I mean. So that's it. There's no reason to be scared right now. Ebola is not spreading to America. It's basically in the Congo right now. People are aware of it. Officials are acting appropriately. And I, I would imagine that this will be kind of like the earlier onset where basically it gets stopped. Even if it starts to grow in terms of the symptoms and cases in the Congo, we learned a lot, I think. And I'm totally, totally speaking based only on what I've seen in the news, all right? But it seemed to me like we learned a lot from that previous West Africa outbreak not too long ago, a few years ago. And I hope that those lessons learned are now being applied to the Congo, because if they are, I would imagine this will be handled in a much more kind of rapid, efficient manner. Back then, there were a lot of mistakes were made. I think cases actually got flown out to America, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly. And hopefully this will be contained in Congo. People will, there will get the, the treatment they need. Appropriate experts will be flown in, and hopefully death will be maintained to a minimum. And my heart goes out to those families who have already been affected by this. It's got to be scary, and clearly it's sad when you lose a family member. So Keep these people in your thoughts. If, there's, if there are charities, I'll look for charities, and if I find any, I'll put links below that maybe you can throw out a few, a few bucks to, to help them out. But in any case, if you're wondering about, about, about Ebola, if you're wondering if there are any outbreaks currently going on, there are. Hopefully this video is informing it to you a little bit at least, and you can go online and look for additional information if, if you really want to learn more. End transmission. Hey y'all, thanks for watching. Look, now that YouTube is censoring everybody, we all need to work together. So please, click the thumbs up on this video, subscribe to my channel, and do one small thing for me. Share this on social media. Share it on Twitter, Facebook, I don't care which, everything, every social media thing you're subscribed to, however little you're willing to do, however much. Also consider buying my books. I'm an award-winning author, and you get what you pay for. You'll at least have some enjoyment out of them. I'm not asking for charity. Take a look at my books. All the links are below. Thanks for watching. Mmm. -hmm.